Commissioner Griffith, what's driving the burgeoning or the, the, the very strong gang presence in Trinidad and Tobago? And have you been able to make any headway in reducing or dismantling those gangs, which seem to be at the forefront in many ways of much of the criminality and murders we see? And that's why um, you would have told me, as a commissioner, I stick my neck out. People say, well, that is not his business. But if it is you're saying that Gary Griffith and the police, we are responsible for crime, then I have a right to state, listen, we have a, an issue, and I'll give you all the different factors that have caused this. When it is that gang members know that if I'm caught with a firearm, I know I could get bail the very next day. A gang member knows that even if I am caught and, I, and I'm, I'm not given bail, I could beat the system because of the loopholes. But that's the end product. What's driving the gang no, no, but, Is but, it but, drugs? No, but, is no, it but illegal the, gun the sales? The end product, no. This is not just the end product. I'll come to, to that after. But as, as I spoke about crime being a product of opportunity, if these systems are not dealt with, the individual will continue being a gang member. If he's aware that if I am held now, I, there will be no bail. If he's aware that he cannot beat the system and come back out, or only get one year in prison, or when he's in prison, he has no access to call shots on the outside. If these things are dealt with, it is going to reduce and minimize the persons becoming gang members. So it is not really the end product alone. That's why we keep saying it's the end product. But those systems have contributed immensely to persons becoming gang members because they realize that there are no consequences, there's no deterrent, and they can easily do what is required and they will get back out onto the streets. So those factors I have, I have been pushing heavily. And then you go to the other element now as to what is the cause. I spoke openly, I know I'm with my very um, vociferous self, I spoke about the problem with, with administrations for years giving gangs state contracts. It is a fact. Um, it cannot be disputed. Um, people will then say, well, if you know that, well, then arrest them. But there's a difference with the intelligence and evidence. We know the gang leaders. We know who they are. And we are seeing that they are getting hundreds of millions of dollars in state contracts. And this is not to pinpoint or target politicians, because at times, even the, at the higher echelon in cabinet, they may not have even been aware at times, because it is done through regional corporations, it is done through extortion as well, where at times the state bodies, they are forced to have to pay protection money to the gang members for them to, to conduct their business. All of these things have contributed immensely towards the gang activity, because when they do this now, it allows them to make a greater profit. They use the profit to purchase more illegal weapons, bring in more drugs, um, hire more gang members, and put hits on other gangs to get their contracts. So the concept of state contracts has proven to be a, a catalyst virtually towards gang-related activity. And that's why I am being very open about it. The Honorable Prime Minister has agreed, and we are doing what is required. Because these gang members, Paul, let me clarify, these gang members are very intelligent young men. They are brilliant. If only they could have used their intelligence in the right manner. They do not use it to help their community. They use it to use their community. And they, they have these little boys and they, they, they put them as, as thugs, as hitmen, as, as mules. And then if something happens to them, they bring in someone else. And the parents allow this. And then the parents will then say he was a good boy. It's just the company he was keeping. And, the, and that's when the only two wicked posse comes in if the police confront them. But the fact of the matter is if these gang leaders turn and utilize their skill because they are leaders. Many times you have one person that could control hundreds or thousands of individuals in their direction. It means that they have a talent. But state contracts are just one part of it. There's also the concern in the public, and, and, and I know you've spoken about uh, specific specialty units in the TTPS dealing with white collar crime and so-called legitimate businesses that are fronting as legitimate in Trinidad Tobago that are really importing the drugs and the illegal guns. Uh, and those are, according to some experts, high-level operatives that are sometimes considered beyond the law because of the, the, the size of the businesses involved and the connections, quite frankly, they have with some people. Yeah, and again, uh, that is why, again, I've, I've stuck my neck out when I demanded, firstly, the bail amendment bill and strongly requested for us to remove the ACIB from, uh, from the AG's office to the, back to the Trans Tobago Police Service. And then we had the firearms bill. And now and the explain your wealth, which is something that I actually drafted when I was in another place as Minister of National Security, uh, where it is it put into civil asset for feature. Mm -hmm. My concept is if you can't get them one way, we'll get them the other. It is not witch hunting, but we are aware that these persons, they are the enemy of the state, and we need to find a way to, to bring them to justice. But are um, we doing that? Well, again, through, the, through the, that, that bill, the explain your wealth, it would assist us. And what I am doing back at the ranch in the Trans Tobago Police Service, apart from making the request for the ACIB to return to the Trans Tobago Police Service, um, there, are, there are three other units that have to d d that deal with white collar crime. You have the FIB, you have fraud, you have the cyber crime, and the um, ECIB. These four units operated as, as silos per se. Now I've amalgamated these four units. They remain as units in 
a white collar crime unit. And, and by doing this, it has, it has greatly assisted us and towards what you would have seen in many cases that we, that we have now dealt with, and it is now for it to, to be dealt with in the courts. The, uh, as I mentioned, I intended to close all gates one way or the other. I think it was very unfair to the public uh, that, that we had these, these cases just pending. And it is not, again, on one way or the other, it must be closed because it is actually to ensure that persons who have been accused, wrongfully accused, they can actually, it can be told that, listen, there's, that, that what was, uh, these persons, what they were accused of is not true. Or if it is that, that there, there, has, there has been some degree of concern on an investigation, the investigation should be closed because those matters should not have taken years. Download the ISO app now for up-to-the-minute news and exclusive news content and visit our website, ISO.com. ISO. News travels fast. <laughs>